Hi everyone, let me introduce you to Rocket, the Rocket Operation Computing Kit. This is a flight computer designed for um, people who do water rocketry as well as model rocketry. And it is a powerhouse. It can deliver 5 volts at 3 amperes of current, which is ideal to move two servo motors. And in addition to that, it features the RP2040. This is the same micro microcontroller used in the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. It runs at 133 MHz and it uses 2 MB of flash memory. Now, in addition to that, uh, we have here a pressure sensor and then the flight computer converts pressure to altitude an accelerometer that measures up to 22.6 g's along the main axis of the rocket and 16 g's perpendicular to it and a piezo buzzer and there are some nice additions to this board as well there is battery charger with two LEDs that indicate once the battery has been charged as well as a battery low LED that tells you when you have to recharge your battery now something very nice about this board as compared to the previous one is that it is the micro USB connector here and then when you want to let's say you want to upload the latest firmware you keep that button pressed connect it to your computer and it will appear as an external flash drive then all you have to do is to drag and drop the file easy no more clunky external programmers now in addition to that we have here a piezo buzzer which you can use for uh, finding the rocket if it lands onto grass or even modify the code so that it can tell you the altitude. On the other side, we have micro SD card and flash memory chip. Let's take a look at some data. Here are the altitude graphs. Both of these data sets are recorded by the flight computer into your micro SD card. The blue curve is the raw data from the altimeter and the red curve is the Kalman filter data. A nice feature of this flight computer is that it incorporates what is known as a circular buffer so that it remembers the first second before the flight and records both that second and the time after launch up to a time of five minutes. Here is acceleration data. In blue we can see the acceleration that is longitudinal that is along the main axis of the board and in orange the acceleration perpendicular to it. After the two minutes mark you can see some heaviness and this is caused by the vibration that is induced by the piezo buzzer but this wouldn't be a problem if you have your board bolted to your rocket. Rocket can also measure temperature. Here is a temperature graph measured by the microcontroller. If you want your rocket to deploy a parachute automatically, simply go to the automatic mode by rotating the rotary switch to position A. In automatic mode, rocket will automatically detect the highest point in your trajectory, that is called apogee, and then it will activate servo 1 after a set amount of time, followed by servo 2. Here is a demonstration. One blink means half a second for servo 1, and three blinks means 1.5 seconds for servo 2. Now the flight computer is armed. I move it horizontally to detect a launch, and I will blow into the pressure sensor to simulate a flight. And that's how it works. If instead you want servo 1 to activate after a set amount of time after launch followed by servo 2, simply go into timer mode by rotating the switch to position B. Here is a demonstration. This means 4 seconds for servo 1, 1.5 seconds for servo 2. Waiting for the
computer to be armed now it's armed now after four seconds servo one will activate now servo two let's configure the flight computer rotate the switch to position C this will allow you to adjust the deploy time in the automatic mode then turn on the device and starting from zero every step equals half a second so if I leave it in step number four that means that the deploy time will be two seconds to save the settings simply turn off the device move the rotary switch to position D to adjust the deploy time in the timer mode starting from zero every step equals one second therefore if I go to position three that equals three seconds let's now adjust the deploy time for servo 2 we do, we do that by moving the rotary switch to position 2 and then we turn on the power alright so now starting from 0 every step is half a second therefore if I leave it at 3 servo 2 will move 1.5 seconds after servo 1 we save the settings by turning off the power Let's now adjust the start position for servo 1. We do that by moving the rotary switch to position E and then turning on the power. Now I can move the, the servo motor in small steps and select the start position for it. And then to save the settings, you switch off the power. To adjust the final position of servo 1, move the rotary switch to position F and turn on the power now you can adjust the final position and save the settings by turning off the power to adjust the start position of servo 2 move the rotary switch to position 0 and turn on the power now you can adjust it You can save the settings by turning off the power. And finally, to adjust the end position for servo 2, move the rotary switch to position 1 and turn on the power. And now you can adjust it to the desired position. And save the settings by switching off the power. One last reminder, remember to charge your battery.